All right, everybody, it is 1133. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, small but mighty group here this morning. So I wanna start by thanking you for your, uh, the time you're taking to be with us. I am Claire Swinford. I'm the Director of Urban Engagement for Downtown Partnership, which is the uh, presenting organization for the Conejos Mural Project. Uh, we have been uh, heavily advised all the way through this process by a uh, jury team uh, of uh, artistic uh, curators and practitioners from around the Pikes Peak region, as well as uh, the indomitable Leah Davis Withrow from the Pioneers Museum, who uh, was the lead historian on the Conejos Neighborhood Oral History Project. Uh, Leah, of course, was very kind to help us set up this opportunity to chat with our lead artist, Mauricio. Uh, she uh, unfortunately can't be with us this morning. Uh, she's dealing with some uh, family stuff out of town. So uh, we're, we're sending her our love and we're uh, sure glad that she was able to help make the connection with you all. Um, uh, before we get started, I would also like to quickly recognize uh, Councilwoman uh, Yolanda Avila, who is with us this morning. Hi, Yolanda. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be here. Um, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but if you wanna say hey, I have uh, clicked the unmute button on my end for you, but you may have to click it on yours. Are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Claire, oh, thank, thank you. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here and to meet the artist, Mauricio Ramirez, and I can't wait to hear about him and what's going on in this project since its inception. I think it's been going on for a couple of years now. has been truly amazing in highlighting a community that is so vital to the city, and now we're being highlighted and amplified. So I'm so excited about this. Thank you so much, Yolanda. Glad, glad you're here. Um, and you're right that this, uh, this project has been going on for a couple of years now. It was first proposed that there should be a mural in the Colorado Avenue underpass at I-25 um, as part of a uh, master plan that the downtown partnership was doing to improve the points of entry to the downtown to give both residents and visitors a sense of the neighborhood's identity and history, a sense of arrival, if you will. Um, so that's been that's been going on for a couple of years. We've put up signs, we've improved the landscaping, we've uh, really put some thought into what kind of public art truly communicates who our city is, who it wants to be, and what someone, someone coming in from outside needs to know about us, about Colorado Springs. And the Colorado Avenue underpass specifically was highlighted because it's a huge connector between the thriving neighborhood of old Colorado City and all of the cultural amenities of the downtown area. But we know if we've been through that underpass, it is not a friendly place to be. It's dark, it's one beige color all the way through. Um, it is not a space that is particularly respected, uh, but it is a space that is used often and in a lot of different ways by a lot of different members of the community. Um, so when we started thinking about a mural for that site, we knew that it had to be truly reflective of the community. And uh, finding out from uh, Colorado Springs Pioneers Museum that they uh, had been launched on this uh, project of documenting the former uh, site of the Conejos neighborhood and speaking with the former residents, we said, well, this, this absolutely communicates an important part of our city's history and identity. And by highlighting it with the help of a nationally recognized artist, we are communicating something important about who we want this city to be. Um, so we were very lucky to uh, get a, a response from uh, Mauricio Ramirez uh, to our request for proposals. He was one of a couple different artists who uh, created concepts for us to cons for our jurors to consider. And ultimately that jury said yes, uh, the way that Mauricio uh, engaged with the history of the, of the Conejos neighborhood and its residents was exactly wanted, what we wanted to see there. So um, we're excited to share that with you this morning. Uh, before I give the floor to Mauricio, I would love our uh, other folks on the call to just quickly say, uh, introduce yourselves to, to Mauricio and, and let you know what, what uh, your history is with the Conejos neighborhood or your interest is with this uh, mural project. So Rudy, uh, I'll call on you first if I can. Hi, I'm uh, Rudy Milena and I was born and raised um, on, in the neighborhood. Uh, my father and grandfather uh, owned the Rio Grande grocery store that was the centerpiece for the neighborhood and where people congregated and survived because most of the food that was distributed um, was, was on credit. 
And uh, I was just talking to my mom a couple of days ago, and she said that one family would come in for um, a quarter pound of hamburger, um, and my father would always give them extra. Um, but I, I knew about the origin of the park and the dragon slide, and the creek was very important to us, and the giant hanging tree that was at the end of uh, Cuchara Street. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's part of my heritage. And so I'm glad to be here. Glad to meet you, Mauricio. Likewise. So it's an honor to, to meet you and, you know, to be researching your family and, and history. It's awesome. It's awesome to meet you. Thanks, Rudy. Nancy, can I call on you next? Absolutely. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Mauricio. It's nice to meet you and hi, everybody else. Um, I am currently at um, Colorado College as their Holbrook Mellon uh, faculty scholar. Um, the research I've been doing is, um, yeah, thanks. It's really kind of been wonderful. Uh, it started with um, Emmanuel Martinez's mural at the FAC, sort of learning the history about that. It's evolved into also looking at the history of the Mexican origin peoples in Colorado Springs, right? Looking at this in terms of the Southwest, looking at it in terms of um, of the, the migration that's happened between from like northern New Mexico, southern Colorado, and you know heading north, kind of looking to see what Colorado Springs fits into that, um, and also looking at um, you know this history of Chicano muralism in uh, in Colorado. So I'm super excited that the city is also um, honoring sort of this this tradition of muralism and working with communities. I'm really excited to hear or to know that Mauricio, you're from Berwyn. I'm from Chicago or well, Aurora and. Chicago. So it's really exciting um, to see that representation as well as artists. So I'm um, just happy to be here. So thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Jerry, can I call on you next? Sure. Hey, Marty Show. My name's Jerry V. Hill. And I was, uh, when I moved down here, I had a question and I wanted to know where all the brown people were. So that led me to find uh, uh, Councilman Avila and some other people. And then I found Leah. And then we just jumped on board and we figured out that we would trace and find out what was going on. And we found the neighborhood of Conejos and then we jumped off from there. So uh, I'm glad to see you. Where are you from, you say? Chicago? <laughs> I'm from Chicago. Um, I've just been traveling for the past couple of years and stuff. But yeah, uh, right outside Chicago, it's a, a neighborhood called Berwyn, Cicero, uh, prettily predominantly Hispanic, um, working class families and stuff. So um, this kind of was, you know, brought up through, you know, the working class and both my parents work, you know, full-time jobs and stuff. And um, yeah, it was just this cute little neighborhood. Nice. You've been up to the museum up there, the Mexican Fine Arts Museum? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right in the neighborhood. It's uh, such cool. an iconic, um, you know, place, you know, and the way that they contribute to the community, not only through art, but just like other forms of services and stuff like it's awesome. It's really cool. Cool. Well, thanks, man. Nice to see you. Thanks, Jerry. And last but not least, uh, Mr. Andy Vick. Hello. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. And Mauricio, welcome to Colorado Springs and the Pikes Peak Region. I'm the director of the cultural office of the Pikes Peak Region. We are the local arts agency that serves all of El Paso and Teller County, including Colorado Springs. Um, we're doing a modest sponsorship to help pay you for your uh, services, so thank you for that. And I'll uh, chime in and say I was born in Chicago and raised in Evanston, so uh, we, got, we got a nice Midwest contingent. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, we're very grateful that the uh, Cultural Office of the Pikes Peak Region is helping to sponsor our community engagement uh, for this project which I'll mention uh, some additional details on that in a little bit. And uh, we also, I, I think it's important to point out that uh, we're, not, we're not using tax dollars for this. Uh, so uh, this mural has been made possible. Uh, Mauricio's design and uh, really hard work putting it together have been made possible uh, through a grant from the El Pomar Foundation, as well as funds from uh, the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, so we're really grateful for the community partnerships that made this possible. Um, and just really quickly before, uh, Mauricio, before I give you the floor, uh, 
I would love to ask uh, Yolanda Avila to just share a, a little bit more about uh, her experience with the, with the Conejos neighborhood. Thank you so much, Claire. I, I just wanted to share, uh, Rudy and I have something in common. And I, was, I wanted Rudy to share about the swing again over the creek. Uh, you know, I was a little kid being on this little tire. Uh, we made a swing out of rope and a tire. Uh, five years old, being swung across the creek. But as Rudy said, I mean, there were many open hands waiting to catch us. It, I grew up around and near uh, Conejos and spent a lot of time there. There used to be a little park there that had little elephants or horses that you can play on. And I do that while my brothers and sisters, they were teenagers at the time. I was still real young uh, while they were hanging out with their friends there. But one of the things that's very unique about uh, Conejos and my district now, a lot of the Conejos people are the generations that followed, live now in Southeast. You know, I represent uh, the black and brown community. We're a majority minority now. And that's exactly how Conejos was. Uh, the, uh, we have a state senator, uh, uh, House Representative Tony Exum, who grew up in Conejos, who lived there, and worked at the store. I think he'd um, work on the, on the floors to, to shine them up, to sand them, and, and get them varnished. And um, Rudy's father was always very generous with candy. And I, we heard so many stories about, you know, the kids. That was a place where they could get candy. And uh, it was such a, a hub for that area. And now I just wanted to say the correlation between, you know, our people of color that were, that lived at Conejos and that were such a strong, connected community are now, is what's reflected in the district that I now serve. And so I just wanted to share that. But so thank you so much. Yeah, we, we do see that legacy uh, throughout District 5, and it's, it's a really important part of what makes Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs. So I'm glad you uh, highlighted that, Councilwoman. Thank you. Um, I, I do, before, uh, last thing, and then Mauricio, I'll let you take it away. I did want to let you all know that uh, we are recording this session. Um, so those who uh, weren't able to join us for whatever reason this morning uh, can access the recording on our website later on. Um, so let's, I, I just wanted to make you all aware that that would be happening and that resource would be available to share um, at downtowncs.com slash mural. So if you go to that site uh, after this meeting is over, I will be posting the audio um, so that folks can uh, listen to it after the fact if they are curious. Um, so with that, uh, Mauricio, I would, I would love for you to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about the uh, Conejos mural design that you've come up with. Uh, so I'll put it up on the screen uh, whenever you tell me you're ready. Sure. Um, well, it's an honor to meet everybody and, you know, taking time out of their busy days to, you know, um, share a little bit of knowledge, you know, of this special place. And um, I've just been approaching this project as if it was um, basically, you know, our baby, you know, it's like, it's this new creation that's about to happen. And um, there's a lot of responsibility with it and stuff. And, you know, the sacredness of the Conecos neighborhood, um, you know, is really important to me because I think this is something that um, needs to be told. I think the legacy that, you know, the Milena family had and, you know, other families in the neighborhood had and really made it special in what it was. Um, you know, as an artist, I try to tell these stories um, through murals and um, I've had the privilege in the past you know five or six years to travel across the country and um, you know share these stories and um, find out information about you know certain communities and ultimately you know giving them you know confidence with these murals and stuff and giving them something that they can be proud of so I think my end goal for this um, mural project is to um, you know tell you know the important stories of the Conecos neighborhood as well as uh, give confidence and, you know, give them something that they can be proud of. You know, it's like something I want to uh, make sure that when you guys drive down there, you know, you'll, you know, bring out of towners, you'll bring your friends there and stuff. And it becomes a, a focal point in Colorado Springs. So, um, you know, I'm really honored to be doing that and stuff. And, you know, I'm just treating this with, um, like I said, as if it's our baby and stuff. So, um, but yeah, as me as a muralist, I've just been, you know, I've been painting my entire life 
I think uh, more community driven stuff I've been doing for the past five to six years. Um, I've worked in uh, all over the country, Milwaukee, Chicago, Texas, um, Los Angeles, you know, everywhere that you could think of. Um, so I'd like to get in. Yeah, so these are just some of the projects that I've done all over the country. Um, you know, some of it's, uh, you know, driven by, you know, my Hispanic culture with the vibrant colors and stuff. And that's, you know, really my style is just, you know, making something that's going to pop, making something that, um, you know, taking a look at, you know, my my heritage and then just, you know, using that as information for colors and, you know, different uh, types of design and stuff. So, you know, I love what I do. Um, I can't see myself doing anything else besides, you know, creating artwork. Um you know, that's gets the community involved and, you know, that tells these stories. Um, so if you guys ever um, have some time later today, I, you know, just feel free to check out some of the, my past work and stuff. But I think right now, uh, the most important thing that I have in my plate uh, in my life is this uh, Bonecos Mural Project. So um, this is, uh, I'm super excited to invest my body and mind into this entire project since it's so uh, physically demanding as well as, um, you know, mentally to, you know, be sharp and, you know, almost act as a historian, uh, so to speak, but, you know, being able to use uh, my artistic ability to tell the stories and stuff. So um, I'll get right into it. You know, I, um, I've i broken it down to the past and then the future with these uh, murals. Um, as you can see, the top mural uh, the Bonecos mural is something that I wanted to touch on. I wanted to touch on, you know, the the history and I wanted to resurrect the history um, similar to the exhibition for Un Grande Familia. You know, I wanted to kind of take that entire energy and, and put it into a mural format where, you know, it becomes eye-catching and it becomes something where, um, you know, it becomes an attraction, you know, and it, and it highlights the beautiful history. And, you know, the colors that I've chosen in the background are... Uh, colors that I went off from the branding uh, packet and, you know, just really try to create this cool, um, you know, moving mural. You see the colors from the background just kind of change as you walk through and stuff. And I think that's going to give a pretty cool, um, you know, immediate impact um, just for the color sake and stuff. And, you know, some of it's, you know, inspired from the side up there that, um, you know, the Mexican blankets that, you know, um, that I've seen where, um, you know, people would actually use and stuff. So, um, but besides that, you know, I decided to highlight, you know, the Milena family, obviously. Um, I have, I took some, uh, took some inspiration from some old photos that uh, I was uh, presented to from Leah, from the archives. And I've just kind of translated those into my own artistic style. So you kind of see the family up top. Um, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, the Rio Grande, you know, grocery store and uh, I saw some images from that and actually used um, images from the, uh, the grandfather, you know, as he's posting up. I could sh share these images with you uh, a little bit later, but um, yeah, I wanted to highlight the history. Um, you know, I have the railroad uh, car right there to kind of symbolize, you know, how, you know, people, you know, sustain themselves. And I thought that entire, um, you know, industry really helped everybody kind of, you know, work and stuff. And I know like a lot of immigrants, you know, they, they need to, you know, provide for their families and stuff. And that's something that, you know, I relate to um, because of my father and my mother, you know, had to, you know, bust their butts to, you know, give whatever they had to do and provide for the next generation and stuff. So I think um, that's where I kind of got inspired by putting the um, railroad car and as well as some of the native plants uh, on the right, you know, I ended up using, you know, the prickly pear cactus just because of, uh, the vibrancy and I think it's a pretty cool touch to it uh, and I just wanted to make some nature elements with it as well so um, you know I have um, you know one of the local gears in there I just kind of put it in black and white to symbolize you know the history and stuff um, and to kind of contrast it with the mural on the bottom where I wanted to really go full color with the imagery and stuff so um, yeah so I broke it down from you know the uh, the rich history to the bright future so that's um, kind of tells the, the color scheme that I chose to do on the top, the black and white, as opposed to the, the full on color on the bottom and stuff. So, um, but yeah, on the bottom, you know, I kind of went a little bit more um, aggressive with the color. Um, you know, the mural, the images on the left kind of symbolize, you know, how uh, 
what I was researching, you know, Jose and Karina Al Alvarado, um, you know, organized one of the first like formal, you know, celebrations of Mexican culture and stuff. And I think when I think about that and all the different types of, you know, Mexican festivals that I've been to, I think everybody likes to show out their, um, you know, their, their traditional costumes. Um, I like to call it traje típico. And so you kind of have, you know, the very colorful, vibrant, you know, dresses that the women would wear um, for the dances and stuff. So that's what you kind of see there. Um, paired off with uh, some butterflies that really showed how and represent, you know, the transformation of Conejos and to symbolize hope and as well as the resurrection of uh, the neighborhood and stuff. And I think this mural is really highlighting everything. And then you go towards the middle. Um, the middle is still... Um, working i was thinking about maybe including uh a figure such as you know mama susie that really helped um you know basically was a real estate queen and you know allowed uh her properties to be rented out by you know local families she never discriminated so i think i might um you know place her in the middle and stuff but you know to the right and to the left you see the world the globe as well as the flowers and i think flowers is a huge symbolism for you know celebrations you know um it's something that uh, is very um, powerful meaning, um, you know, during the festivals of, uh, you know, celebrating this Mexican culture. I think, you know, that's something that people would wear on their hair. People would, you know, would give it to other people and stuff. So I think that's always a great touch to mix in with the nature. And then to the right, you know, you kind of have a contemporary photo of a, a mother and a baby kind of just looking at you and stuff. And it's just like this really intimate moment of how um, you know, it was just the next generation and how we're going to look to the future and, you know, really highlight our youth and stuff. And then to the end, uh, you see like a colored version of the deer up top. So it's just, again, contrasting the, um, the old rich history with the new vibrant, uh, bright future. And so, um, so yeah, so that's a kind of in a nutshell. Um, I'm, I really like the background colors and stuff. I think you know, seeing that from afar and just driving past it and just seeing like the story, I think it's going to be a really um, unique destination. But, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, awesome. Thanks, are you, are you, are, you um, are you open to receiving any more images? Because I have tons I, of pictures. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely open and stuff. Um, like I said, Mama Susie, I think uh, I, I was having a hard time finding an image of her. Um, but yeah, I would love to connect, you know, later today. And, um, you know, maybe we could, you know, explore some more uh, imagery and stuff. Okay. I've got a great picture of Mama Susie. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. That's great, Rudy. Are there other elements of this design or um, other elements you would like to see uh, represented? Uh, I, I know that Yolanda met, uh, specifically mentioned the uh, the dragon play structure and the uh, big tree down by the river. Um, I don't know whether Rudy, whether those uh, resonate with you, whether you think you might have photos of those. The, the dragon was a huge part of um, all of the children's lives in, in the neighborhood. Um, I remember when it was constructed, it was made of, uh, it had a, a wire frame to it and you could see the outline of the dragon and then uh, a gentleman who worked for the city who who only had one arm actually um, pasted on the liquid fiberglass and it's it's the most amazing smell <laughs> I've ever experienced it's just <laughs> wonderful but the but the dragon slide was a huge part of the neighborhood and um, an iconic image that everyone would would recognize. The other thing was that tree. It was a giant cottonwood tree at the end of Cuchadas, and um, I actually contacted one of the sons, who was a Duran from the Duran family, who lived next to the tree, and we would swing out over the tree. Now we didn't have a we we weren't advanced like y Yolanda and didn't have a, a tire. Uh, tied at the bottom we just had a big fat knot and you'd you put the knot between your legs and swing out over fountain creek and uh and pray that you got back that first time because if you didn't get back the first time your momentum wasn't enough to get you back but there were always kids in the neighborhood there to grab you and save you so the tree was very important to the neighborhood and uh um i, I don't have any pictures of it 
certainly a cottonwood tree, I, <laughs> I, I think would be a recognizable symbol for, uh, for folks is what I'm hearing, Rudy, is that correct? It was a giant, yeah. It was yeah. I, I wanted to just mention too that conejos means rabbit, right? right? And I'm thinking that when the Spaniards came, and there are times too, you could just walk anywhere in the city in certain parts of the city and there are tons of rabbits all over. Mm. And so I think we have to go back with the meaning. And I am so sad that, you know, that name was changed to, I think it's Simeon, to a, a Denver developer. But they took our name away, uh, Conejos. And I think that's significant, you know, that it was named Conejos. And I'm gathering that when it was first being developed, that there must have been a lot of rabbits around. <laughs> the other thing that's really important is the fact that it was a very diverse neighborhood. Um, there were um, soldiers from Fort Carson who lived in the neighborhood and, and rented homes um, along the block. And so um, there was a variety of color, a, a variety of uh, uh, ethnic, ethnicity. And when I was little, um, I had a friend who lived down the street whose mother was Japanese and his father, his father was black and we would go to school every day. So there, were, there was a variety of people in that neighborhood, uh, just, a, just a rainbow. Thanks, Rudy. That's, I, I'm, I'm putting together quite, quite the list here of uh, things to, to follow up with, with you and with, the, uh, with Leah about. Uh, is, is there anything else I should have on that list? You know, I've got the, the incredible diversity of the neighborhood, um, the importance of reflecting the, the uh, mix of cultures that was present there, um, the, uh, the dragon slide, the cottonwood tree, the rabbits, um, I, and anything else that you want to make sure that Mauricio hears about the history or about uh, sort of the, the landmarks, uh, either emotional or physical for uh, the folks who live in the neighborhood? Well, I just say and uh, put in a plug, my mother was the dance director um, there were five families with uh, Corina and uh, Jose Alvarado. So the five other families that did just as much work around the uh, Fiesta Bonita. And my mother all volunteer designing the choreography, the, the costumes, uh, doing the choreography for the different dances. And my mom knew all the regional dances because she had studied that in Mexico. She knew all the regional dances of Mexico. But my mother also threw in mambos and cumbias and, and what was reflective. And what's really interesting is that when the Puerto Rican soldiers would come in to watch the, to watch the fiestas, it, there was a three-day fiesta festival there at Acacia Park. Many times, sometimes it was at the old Antlers Hotel, sometimes it was at the City Odd, but mostly at Acacia Park that we'd hold these festivals. And when we would do the mambos and the cumbias and the salsas that my mom added to the repertoire, uh, the Puerto Rican soldiers would go crazy and they felt so at home and they would just start dancing and and having a good time. So it was, it was a depressed area. People were working class, if not poor, but it was so community and so lively and vibrant with the dance, with the music. I mean, could we, we bring in mariachi from Mexico? And so um, my mom was a real big part of it, Angela Avila, as were the Archuletas, as were the Ornelases. There were, it was like five families that brought this with their hard work, sweat and tears without getting a dime and pretty much putting money into it that made this happen year after year from the late 50s all the way into the 80s. That's I guess another big part of the neighborhood was the church on the south end of, uh, of the block. Uh, when I was little, it was called the Chadburn Spanish Gospel Mission, and it was interdenominational, and everyone from the neighborhood went there, and it's the only structure still standing from the original neighborhood um, next to the, next to the uh, overpass uh, going into Manitou Springs. But um, my family attended that church when we were little, and uh, during the summer, I just made a donation to the church because... Um, 
when I was a kid, I went to vacation Bible school and I ate a ton of graham crackers and chocolate milk. And so this is my opportunity to, to pay back some of that debt. Um, so I made a donation to the church, but the church is still standing. Um, you know, there are a lot of homeless uh, around uh, now that are, that are sent uh, away every now and then. But uh, my, my 91 year old mom still goes to that church. And I know from conversations with the with the sexton who takes care of the property, I, he he's definitely got an uphill battle, but he's he's an amazing person to talk to just from his his obvious love for the building and the the history of the way it has served the community, and at the same time that the compassion that he bears toward uh, the, the folks who are experiencing homelessness who are, are throughout that area today, it's. It's pretty incredible. So I'm glad to hear, Rudy, that that was that was such a special place to you, and that you're you're able to support it in that way today. Um, Jerry, Nancy, Andy, I, I'd love to make sure you have the chance to ask questions or, or share comments now that you've seen the design. I don't want to put there, you on the spot, but there is that center pylon that was supporting the uh, the right in the dividing uh, of the road. Is anything targeted for that? Um, Good question. Uh, we will be. I'm, I'm sure it's on both ends, so maybe that could something could be incorporated there. Yeah, and uh, the one of the contributors to this project has been the Colorado Department of Transportation. We've had to uh, listen pretty carefully to them how uh, how we're allowed to enhance the property uh, because, of course, this is also structural. Uh, the, the underpass uh, walls and, and supports in the middle are the things that keep the, the bridge from uh, collapsing. Uh, so what we heard from them about those central columns, um, you know, we had originally come in saying, oh, let's put lights up there and the lights can change colors and we'll do this and we'll do that. And they said, well, we don't want to confuse motorists and we have to be able to inspect every surface of those columns to be able to ensure that they're maintaining their structural integrity. So the one thing they said we could do is to put um, signage in front of, but separate from the columns. And uh, we, we had enough budget to uh, commission a sign that will uh, uh, sort of delineate the, the boundary between downtown and OCC. You know, if you go to that bridge today, there's the, the sign uh, as you're headed west that uh, tells you that you're entering the old Colorado City Historic District. and uh, eventually there will be a sign that is visible as you're headed east that is letting, letting you know that you're entering the downtown Colorado Springs Creative District. Uh, but the far more visible element is going to be uh, the mural, which of course uh, Mauricio has included the lettering uh, to spell out Conejos so that uh, as people are traversing the underpass, the thing they're going to be left with is, ooh, Conejos is here. What is Conejos? Um, and we, we do plan to uh, put together some interpretive materials that people can access either remotely or while they're in the space in order to learn about each of those design elements that Mauricio has included in the mural. Uh, so the idea that maybe uh, you go in and you uh, have your smartphone open and you uh, tap on the uh, image of the Fiesta dancers and what you hear is uh, Yolanda telling the story of her mother and the choreography and the way that the Puerto Rican soldiers would join in, just as an example of something we might do. Um, but it is important to us to make sure that it doesn't stop with just what's on the walls. We wanna make sure that people know that they can access the history from there. And because we have all of this wonderful material that has been gathered for the Una Familia Grande exhibit, uh, we hope to be able to help that some of that live in, in the space of the underpass as people are viewing the mural. I, I think that, Go ahead, Nathan. Thank you. Um, I think it's, uh, that sounds really, it sounds, all, everything sounds wonderful. And I do echo um, some of the points raised by both Rudy and Council Member Avila in terms of like the specificity in terms of uh, the history and how this area is remembered. And also the playground, just, I think that seems very, um, very important as I, you know, hearing about the Conejos neighborhood and just this, it is a thing that is, um, talked about most often along with the store, right? So um, 
So I don't have really anything other to add. I do have a question um, that I was curious, two questions. One of them being, I just wanted to hear more from Mauricio in terms of his style. I have looked at it in the past and I'm just kind of curious to like the pixelated nature of the human figures in, 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 the, in the painting. Just I wanted to hear more on that. And then I was just kind of curious if the city has, um, been in discussion or plans to sort of, you know, in terms of like preservation efforts, right, of uh, murals, um, murals kind of like going forward, you know, what do we, what does the city do to maintain and, um, you know, preserve this history? Those are great questions, Nancy. I'll let Mauricio tackle, uh, tackle his response first and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about preservation. Sure, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. So, you know, I think as an artist, um, Everybody tries to develop their own unique voice and, you know, visual aesthetic and stuff. And, you know, I've chosen to go a little bit geometric, you know, kind of influenced from like Pablo Picasso um, to mix with a little bit of, um, you know, today's technology. You know, I think a lot of times um, many artists like to paint everything, uh, you know, very literal uh, as if it was a photograph. And, you know, um, me, I try to do things a little bit different. You know, I always try to uh, be a little bit different than everybody else. So I decided to, you know, um, commit to a style where um, it's just broken down by, you know, colors and shapes and stuff. When you get really close, you know, it gets pretty abstract. But, you know, the farther you're away, it becomes, you know, recognizable and stuff. And it's just something that I found um, very successful with, um, you know, some of the subject matter that I paint and stuff. It's I think it's cool because it's presenting it in a different way than you would typically see a mural where it would be pretty pretty literal but um that's just my style i wanted to i just wanted to be different you know i wanted to um create my own lane and um you know and just really kind of establish my own style so um so uh with that being said um you know i, I will uh tackle the the preservation stuff i think every time i do a mural i try to you know really prep the wall um and just treat it as if it's you know, gonna be there for, you know, a very long, long time. So some of the things that I do um, when I produce murals, especially for something like this, where it's gonna be, you know, somewhat of a, you know, destination and landmark and not just really a thing that's here today and gone tomorrow, this is, you know, gonna stick. So, you know, I just, you know, start off by power washing the wall, like you would uh, any other wall from all the debris and stuff. And then I use a, a specific primer called um, a vapor permeable primer that seals the, um, seals the masonry, you know, uh, brick and like uh, surface to allow it to breathe and allow moisture to get in and out and stuff. And I think that's the, the, the key when producing murals. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll have artists kind of just use the, you know, cheapest paint to, you know, cut costs and stuff. But um, that's not really how I approach things. I try to use the best materials. Um, I work with some of the best, um, I guess, um, experts in, you know, uh, you know, Sherwin Williams, and I work with them directly. That's I'm not sponsored by them, but they just, you know, provide some of the best um, uh, material for, you know, longevity when it comes to murals and stuff. And, you know, I have a background in industrial painting and as well as residential stuff. So um, how I approach a lot of my murals, I kind of approach it as if it's, you know, a, a job where I'm either painting a house or painting a building and stuff. I've worn all different types of hats as a painter and stuff. So I like to bring that type of um, knowledge um, to projects that I do, um, such as this one. So, so um, but yeah, that's, that's how I approach, um, and prep a lot of my murals and stuff, but Claire, I'll let you take it and stuff. Well, and that certainly, uh, that's one of the things I appreciate about the prismatic treatment that you give to your design elements is, um, not only does it create a certain level of abstraction that makes people want to invest a little more time and thought into understanding what they see, but it also makes it easier to conserve, uh, you know, given that each prism is a specific color and we can essentially map that out and reference back to it um, in the event that we have to go out and uh, do some repainting at any point. We have essentially our paint by numbers guide to, to help us do that in a way that respects the integrity of your original work. Um, and the, the other thing I love about that um, is that it does allow community members to to help you in the process of painting the mural. And I know you've designated some particular uh, day, Fridays and Saturdays throughout the month that you'll be with us where you are inviting community members to come down and uh, grab uh, either a spray can or, or a paintbrush and help fill in those prisms with you. 
Uh, so I posted the link to uh, the web page for this mural on our on the downtown CS page. Um, that is in the chat for you. Uh, please share it widely. That page has the dates of uh, those specific days that Mauricio has identified uh, for community members to, to come down and help paint. It's going to be um, next Friday and Saturday, uh, the 18th and 19th, and then uh, the next two are going to be the 28th and 29th. Is that, do I have that right? Yep. Great. Um, so we're uh, we're very uh, interested in making sure that uh, both <clears throat> former residents of this area and current residents of this area um, can feel a sense of ownership in, in helping to paint the mural under Mauricio's guidance. Long term, it's going to remain the property of um, the Downtown Development Authority, which is not a city entity, it's quasi-governmental, um, but it is going to be insured by us, monitored by us, uh, conserved by us, uh, with the hope that it does continue to be a wonderful asset and way of welcoming people to uh, the downtown neighborhood for many, many years. Claire, will you be sharing social media links with us? We'd love to help push that out. That's coming up pretty quick. Yes. Uh, so anything you can do to pass that on to, to me or Angela directly, we'll get that on social media so we can get as many people there as possible. Yes, those invites should be going live uh, later today, Andy. Uh, we were working on uh, getting Mauricio's schedule refined and finalized. Uh, so now that we have that done, we'll be uh, mailing out a postcard with the help of the Pioneers Museum to all of uh, the former Conejos residents for, for whom uh, Leah has mailing addresses. We will be passing out postcards listing the community paint days to the neighboring businesses uh, like City Glass and Cerberus Brewing Company and Bill's Tool Rental. Um, to alert the neighborhood to the fact that this is going on. And uh, the uh, Pioneers Museum will also have a huge stack of those postcards. Um, and we also have a list from the cultural office. So if, uh, if you're interested in getting the postcards or the Facebook invite, um, just go ahead and drop your email address in the chat. Uh, we'll be trying to get this out to uh, as many folks as possible over the course of the next, uh, next two weeks uh, to ensure that uh, people have the chance to come paint. And if they don't, um, the other thing that we're going to do, do uh, Mauricio, I know this was a wonderful idea you had as part of your original community engagement strategy was to create a coloring page uh, based on your design for the mural uh, so that folks who are unable to come paint it can uh, access it from their homes and color it in, post it on their fridge and feel like they have a piece of that mural uh, living with them in their house. So. Um, if you have other suggestions, other people that we should be uh, talking to, making sure that they know about this, um, please uh, either drop it in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself because um, we do want to make sure that this is something that the community feels uh, not only pride in, but also ownership of. That's very important to us. Claire, is, is there the opportunity for community members to make uh, monetary uh, contributions to this project? That's amazing, Rudy. Um, I would, <laughs> you know, I, I would say at this point, we, we have the funding we need. Um, certainly, uh, the Pioneers Museum is another wonderful organization uh, that accepts donations uh, related to the history of the Conejos neighborhood. Um, you, you may have already given there. Um, but if you're interested in, in supporting uh, projects like this, we do have a donate link on our website. Um, if you go to downtowncs.com, um, I, can, I can also post that in the chat as well. That's that's really very, very kind of you. So thank you. Pioneer Museum is also running a open archives for the families and the generations of the Conejos neighborhood to bring in their history so it could be archived in the Pioneer Museum for austerity. Mm -hmm. And that's one other thing. And also, Rudy, don't you uh, run a Facebook uh, page for the Conejos neighborhood? I do, yeah. And I, and I run as well, so we, that's another uh, avenue for marketing is the Facebook. So if yeah. there's a way I can and Rudy can get information condensed into the Facebook format, then Thanks, uh, we Rudy. could run it that way. Great yeah, here, um, if you guys Great. would be willing to uh, drop your email addresses in the chat, I will make sure to send you our Facebook event link when it's live. Um, and. One, one thing that we are still seeking to fund, um, so certainly Rudy, if, if you or anyone else felt uh, moved to, to make a donation, one thing we are still looking to fund is that oral history tour of the, of the mural. When I mentioned the idea that someone would, would be able to walk up with their smartphone and 
you know, put their smartphone camera on the on the image of the dancers and hear someone talking about the history of the Fiesta Bonita. That is, that is something that we still hope to do, but we have not explicitly started fundraising for it yet. But um, thanks, Jerry. I see your email address. Uh, Rudy, I, if you want to, there, awesome. You guys are great. So um, I will make sure to send you the Facebook link when it's live. It should be later today or tomorrow. Okay. Any, any other suggestions? Um, folks, we should be uh, telling, uh, issuing specific invites or, or talking to directly about this. Any parting thoughts for Mauricio? I'll just say, uh, I think it looks fantastic, Mauricio. And I see Susan just popped on. I want to just commend Susan, who is the CEO of the Downtown Partnership, and Claire for bringing uh, amazing artwork to our community, to our downtown. Uh, this is what makes City great. City's great is having great art. And this is going to be a wonderful addition. So I tip my hat to both of you and look forward to seeing you uh, complete the project, Mauricio. Thank you. And I, I apologize that I'm just now tagging in on the end, but I did want to welcome you back, Maurizio, to Colorado Springs. We're happy you're here. Um, and we look forward to uh, these next couple of weeks with you. Um, so uh, you. 14 years ago, um, I believe it was 14 years ago, as soon as America the Beautiful Park was completed, um, I organized a, a Conejo Street reunion and uh, my father and my mother were alive. My mom's still still with us, but they were able to contact many people from the old neighborhood um, to come to the celebration. And we had maybe 200 people there um, in the, the America, the beautiful park. And it was great to see um, people from, from a long time ago present. And so if there was some sort of uh, inaugural event for this mural in the park, which is so conveniently right there, where we can invite all the old members from the neighborhood to attend. Um, I'm sure my mom would jump on that in a second. <laughs> I love that idea. And that was part of our uh, original plan, uh, was to hopefully dedicate the mural uh, in the company of uh, the former residents um, out, of, out of respect to, to people's diminished ability to travel and, you know, increased exposure, I, I think we'll probably, hopefully, look at doing that um, after a vaccine for COVID is available, um, maybe to celebrate the mural's birthday uh, at some point in the future. But I agree, Rudy, that it's, it's important to think about um, a specific occasion on, on which to reconvene that community uh, in, in the space uh, to, to celebrate uh, all that's been done to preserve their history. I, I think this is super exciting. I'm really excited. Um, thank you, Claire, Downtown Partnership, and all the collaboration. I'm excited to see, uh, well, as well as I can see it, Mauricio's work. And But I'm sure I'll feel it, feel that energy coming off. I think a, a celebration would be a really nice tie-in with the sesquicentennial, which will be celebrated at the end of July of uh, 2021. Maybe we could just figure something around there with uh, Rudy's idea of getting the neighborhood together as much as possible. Um, so I, I really do like that idea of a reunion and figuring out if we could do that to be part of the, I think it is a part of the 150 stories, right? For the sesquicentennial, I think which is. is our 150th uh, birthday for Colorado Springs and that's why we call it the sesquicentennial and maybe we just have a tie-in with that so just leaving that out there. I love it. We'll, uh, we'll continue to pay attention to that date as it draws closer in the hopes that the public health uh, guidelines will allow us to, to actually mark it with an in-person gathering. Well great everyone. Um, if there are no more questions or comments uh, for Mauricio, then I'll leave it at that for today. I will send a follow-up email with that uh, Facebook event link and uh, the uh, link to the recording of our conversation today. Please share those far and wide with anyone you think might be interested. 
Um, and hopefully we'll uh, see at least some of you out there to help us paint the mural either next week or the week after. But in the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you for spending the time with us today. I, I really appreciate everything you've shared. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Be safe, everyone. Take care, guys.